Back in the 2015 heyday of Minecraft Pocket Edition content creation, Lifeboat was the server to play on, there's no question about it. The real questions now, though, are what happened to Lifeboat and why is it so hated now? In this video, I'll try and answer some of these questions, but to do this, we'll have to dive a little bit deeper into the downfall of Lifeboat and why it's become what it is today. First, however, if you could leave a like on the video if you're excited to see what it brings, and subscribe if you're new and enjoy my content, that would be much appreciated. Now, enjoy the video. I do want to give an introduction of myself and my expertise, I guess, on the subject. I remember playing Minecraft Pocket Edition on my iPod 4th generation back in 2013, and the first server that I remember connecting to is lbsg.net, presumably because I found it by googling Minecraft Pocket Edition servers. I remember, alongside so many of the Minecraft Pocket Edition boomers, the old, old spawn of Lifeboat. You know, the one that's a floating island with a fountain in the middle. I've been producing Minecraft Pocket Edition content on and off since 2014, and back then I was inspired by creators like Bayesian Canadian and Jerome ASF who would do their daily survival games videos. There are some playlists of my old Lifeboat survival games videos that you can still find today. Some of the background gameplay that you might be watching right now is gameplay from back in 2015. It's safe to say that I have kind of been here since the beginning. A little known fact about me, however, is the fact that I used to work for Lifeboat. I held a customer support position for a few months in late 2016. I ultimately left the position because I didn't have time to balance that and school at the same time, but during that time I learned a few things that would foreshadow what Lifeboat was to become today. One of the things that I learned about was what would become Uber VIP, which is the subscription-based premium rank on Lifeboat. Before Uber VIP existed, there were just two lifetime ranks, VIP and VIP+, Plus, which essentially just got you kits in survival games and a rank next to your name. Name. Yes, you paid real money to gain a competitive advantage in a game, I'm not denying that at all. But now, while past VIP holders still have their VIP rank, it isn't the same as Uber VIP. The largest issue I have with this is the fact that you can't play the Prisons game mode without having Uber VIP or a Prisons Pass, both of which cost more real money. The Legacy VIP rank is essentially worthless now. The only features that it has is having a tag next to your name and being able to fly around in the lobby. I guess it's $10 well spent to be able to get cinematic footage to use in a video that'll probably end up making more than $10, but how was I supposed to know that 6 years ago when I used an App Store gift card? In all seriousness, it's just unfortunate that a lifetime rank that was purchased years ago gets you essentially nothing now. Yes, they still are upholding the fact that it is a lifetime rank by giving you 2 perks, but showing no respect to the players that supported the server in the beginning is just kind of sad. Another thing that OG players hate about Lifeboat now is the fact that there's no no survival games anymore. It was quietly removed with an update in April of 2020, and was replaced by the funniest joke of a battle royale ever, Lifeboat Battle Royale. I've played and talked about this in a different video, and you can go check that out if you want to see more of what it's like, but it's just Fortnite and Minecraft, and it's not a fun game mode to play by any means. Now, survival games being removed is more of an unfortunate coincidence more than anything. The Bedrock Edition content creation community sort of started to revive itself in May of 2020, one month after survival games was taken out. According to the blog post, survival games when it was taken out only averaged about 0.5% of the server's traffic at any given time, but honestly I find that hard to believe. Servers like the Hive and Cubecraft usually average at least 3 or 4% of the player base playing survival games at any given time, so I don't see why Lifeboat, the original Minecraft Bedrock Edition survival game server, was only getting 0.5% at any given time. The logic really doesn't add up there. So survival games has been removed from Lifeboat, that's just a fact now. Many members of the community have been asking for survival games to return to Lifeboat. It's where so many of us got our start as content creators and we'd love nothing more than to play on the original server again. If survival games return to Lifeboat, I guarantee there would be good numbers of players playing it, because, let's face it, high survival games is extremely boring, and Cubecraft survival games is a lag fest. Well actually, speaking of lag fest, that can apply to Lifeboat as well. When you're in the main lobby, say goodbye to your FPS for the first 15 or so seconds that you're in the lobby, because they've gotta load in all the 3D models for the microtransactions you can buy. Like, it's really, really bad. You ever just get disconnected from the server because you wanna play a certain game mode, but the game mode says no? and just gets you disconnected from the server? Well, if you play on the Lifeboat server, your dreams of getting disconnected at random times can finally become true. But that's not the only lag you'll experience on the server. You ever try PvPing on Lifeboat? Thank you. 
However, even when you do get the rare moments where you and other players aren't teleporting around the map, it's not really like the games are that fun to play. If you're using a keyboard and mouse to play the game, chances are you'll probably win every game just because everyone else that plays on the server seems to be a mobile player. There's also things like maps being badly designed and not being intuitive to the player. You know the B map that's in Sky Wars? That's been out for as long as I can remember that Lifeboat Sky Wars has existed. That map still makes no sense to me when I play on it. But even if you're okay with playing on a half-finished laggy server with some super generic game modes that don't make any sense to the average player while playing against mobile players, I have more reasons why you should dislike Lifeboat. Well, actually, it's just one core reason with a lot of evidence to back it up. It's the fact that the heads of Lifeboat literally don't care about you, other players, or even their own staff members. They don't care about making the server a better experience for players. They only care about making as much money as possible with as little effort as possible, and I think that's pretty apparent from the first five minutes of this video. But if you would like more evidence to back up the bold claim I just made, well, I have it right here for you. One of the earliest examples that I have of the Lifeboat staff not listening to their team is from Jack Nordhaus, one of my personal friends. He had a part developer, part playtester role in Lifeboat back in 2014 or 2015. He was laid off due to reasons unrelated to his issues with Lifeboat, but I still do want to highlight some of those issues that he had. I'll go ahead and read out what he said to me. Whilst I was there, I actually tried to make changes too. All of their announcement messages were messed up and literally looked like they were written by non-native English speakers, and when I submitted changes to the code, our good friend Rain Teeter informed me that I just didn't understand his humor. Meanwhile, thousands of kids were reading all these half incorrect messages on their server. Doesn't seem like much, but the fact that this grown man was fine full well knowing that over half the messages had spelling mistakes, incorrect grammar, punctuation, etc., and had someone fix it for them, and they didn't give the slightest of is what opened my eyes. So, while it's obviously bad that a multi-million dollar corporation wouldn't even fix spelling mistakes that a literal 14-year-old pointed out to them, this story by Jack is a relatively unknown example of Lifeboat not listening to even the simplest of suggestions by their staff. There are so many examples of these, one of the most well-known being from a former staff member named PopZQ. I do realize that Pocket Gaming played a large section of this clip in his video about Lifeboat, but I do want to play a smaller clip of PopZQ's video just to get my point across that Lifeboat only cares about making money Money and not about the player's experience. And pretty much, I cleared out some griefers and chat was happy. No one was yelling, no one was you know, swearing, no one was getting themselves muted. And I brought it up with Caleb. I said, hey, why don't we implement a rule for no griefing? And you know, when moderators are on creative, they can get rid of griefers. But he actually completely shut me down on that idea, no matter how much I brought it up. And he's just like, no, we need players to buy plot tickets. No, we need players to do this. No, we need players to do that. So what that showed me is that he's choosing, you know, instead of dedication to the server, he's choosing, you know, money and getting payment. But if this doesn't convince you that Lifeboat doesn't care what you have to say as a player, or what their staff members have to say, well, there are countless more examples of it happening. You've probably noticed that recently, there have been a significant number of Lifeboat staff members publicly resigning from their position. And most of these resignations seem to have the same message in common. It's that the head staff members don't take into consideration anything that they have to say. They don't take valid suggestions into consideration at all, and they actively punish staff members that criticize the server in private. I would go watch Irish Potatoes video on this. It's a complicated subject that I don't have enough information to talk about completely, so go click on the card in the top right to learn more about that. But there's one final, major issue that I have with Lifeboat that most of you guys probably already know about, and it's the reason why I decided to stop stalling on this video and finally make it. It's the fact that Lifeo actively upheld a policy silencing any discussion of anything related to LGBTQ anywhere on their network. Now, I do have a couple of disclaimers before we get too deep into this. I am a straight male. However, I do believe in defending the rights of the LGBTQ community. I believe that you should be able to love whoever you want, and I think that's a common belief among people. However, that freedom does work in the other direction, and people are allowed to believe otherwise. Lifeboat is a private entity, and they are allowed to ban discussion of LGBTQ topics on their network if they would like to. I take issue with that, but that's kind of how it is, and I can't really do anything about that. The main part that I take extreme issue over is the fact that after a member of Lifeboat's board of moderation stepped down and explained the policy, Lifeboat suddenly switched up and started allowing the discussion of LGBTQ discussion on their server. While this is obviously a good thing that the policy has been changed, like Samartar, the guy who exposed this policy said, it really looks like a cover-up to try and save themselves from backlash. And that's just one more thing to throw on the ever-growing pile of reasons why you shouldn't support the worst Minecraft Bedrock Edition featured server, Lifeboat Network. Thank you for watching.
Before we end the video, I would like to give a huge thank you to everyone who helped contribute to this video, alongside the people who helped support me monetarily. A huge shout out to my channel members who support me for $4.99 a month, and their names are displayed up on screen. They get some cool perks, and if you'd like to learn what those are, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button below the video, or the link in the description. I'd like to thank you guys again so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you enjoy my content. That's a way you can support me and my content for free, and you can always unsubscribe later if you would like. That's gonna be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.